Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another video featuring the Not Too Shabby Shop's new release. Uh, Jamie has a rewards program in her shop and she also offers a discount code. Right now it's N2S10, you get 10% off. There are some restrictions, but works on most things. These are the four cute stamp sets that she just released in her spring and summer release. This first one is called Picnic Fun. It's got a bear and a chicken picnic table and some apples and like a little basket, a banner, and some fun sentiments. The second one is Tea Time Buddies. And it has a couple of little critters in some teacups, a stack of teacups, some macaroons or macarons or I don't even know how you say that. Tea bag and the word merci. This third one here is Summertime Buddies. And it's got these adorable little animals, a dog and a cat. And they're both in like little tubes. This is a stamp set we're going to use today. Um, it's got that cool cup and a sunshine and sand castle. And this is the fourth set here. It's called Spring is in the Air. It has these adorable little um, duck and bunny and they're in their rain boots and they got umbrellas and it's just so cute. Uh, and everything can mix and match. It all works really well together. So remember to stop at the shop, um, nottooshabbyshop.com and N2S10 will get you 10% off most things. There will be a link in the description for um, each of the stamp sets that are in their new release as well as a bundle that Jamie offers. So this month, the month of March, I am practicing my watercoloring. And I have a couple of different options for watercolor in my craft room. I have a pan set, Gonzai Tombi. I have a, I don't even know what they would be called. Um, they're paper. I think they're called, mm, I'll have to think about it for a minute. Um, but these are some watercolor pencils. I have some stamping up ones. And then I have these. These are General's Kimberly watercolor pencils and these are really really old um, they work amazing and I am really loving them um, I use them like this so I color on the paper with a really really light hand and then after I put in what I think is going to be my shading then I bring a damp brush to the paper and um, blend out the color and it seems like there it's always really light so then I bring the pencil back and I add more color. So here you can see that it dries really fast because there's not a lot of water on my brush and um, it blends out really nice. Oh, the other watercolors I was talking about are peerless watercolors. I, I have a set of those and uh, I've used them in a couple of videos and I like them, but I need to practice my watercoloring. So you'll probably see them this month um, as well as the other uh, Gonzai Tombi and um, the Stamping Up ones as well. So um, when I was coloring this, you see I colored right through the lemon in the back there because I was like, there is missing, it's missing a line. Why isn't the line there for the back of the cup? And um, I did not realize that you wouldn't be able to see the back of the cup till right here. <laughs> I was like, um, yeah, the lemon is yellow and um, it would cut off the line of the cup. Anyway, <laughs> so I was able to pick up the color and um, just cover it up and it worked just fine. If, if you didn't know that I did it, you wouldn't know. So there you go. Now you know all my secrets. Uh, and then I chose uh, this red here to color in the straw. Now this is all very simple coloring. I did all the coloring for the entire release at one time. And I'm just showing you here the coloring that I used for this card. For the sunshine, um, I used this yellow and I kind of scribbled it on there. Just really light hand though. Um, if you leave pencil marks, you're not going to really move them or I couldn't really move pencil marks. And that's what I struggled with when I first had these is I would, my hand, I was using too heavy of a hand. There's a tooth to the watercolor paper. It will naturally grab the pigment. These watercolor pencils are just like pan watercolors, like the dry pigment in a pencil form. So um, you have to look at them that way. So for the sun, I added the shading where I wanted the shading. I did the orange and then the red and I did add a little bit of purple just to deepen it up. The set of watercolor pencils that I have has 12 colors in it. That includes black, brown, and tan. So um, all of my coloring for this entire release was done with 12 pencils and I think it did a pretty good job um, making sure that I had all the shading that I was really looking for. So I wanted to show how to 
create a cute little scene. I want, first of all, I wanted to see if I could create a cute little scene with these pencils. I wanted to see if they would cover a larger area um, like pan watercolors do. So I covered two thirds of this with the light blue pencil and then I added some darker in there and then um, tan at the bottom and then did blend in just a little bit of this brown and it looks so light and ridiculous. And then I took just a tiny bit of water and wetted, wetted, is that the right word? Wetted, wet, the, the paintbrush and then spread the color. And this is going to be the water. And that top line, I'm kind of letting it dry a little bit. That is going to be the horizon. So here I'm putting in the beach and then I'm going to blend the sky and I didn't want it to blend into the water. I wanted it to be blue, but I also wanted to keep that horizon line. And then I just kind of added some ripples and some streaks to the water. So I decided to die cut this with a Gina Marie nested scalloped rectangles die. I really am loving these die, this die set lately. And when I worked with this release, I pulled out uh, several pattern paper pads and I pulled out several dies. And I tried to stick with those things for the whole release. And I think I made lots of very different cards, um, but I think that it was nice having um, minimal supplies. So here I used a Versa marker to draw in like the foam part of the water hitting the beach. And I drew in, um, scribbled in some clouds. And then I used this Wow White Puff Embossing Powder. I could have used just regular white embossing powder, but I thought this Puff Embossing Powder would be kind of a neat texture. There's a lot of texture here with the watercolor paper and um, you know, the the painting on the watercolor paper is textured and then with the um, puff embossing powder, I just thought it created kind of a neat scene. So that really did warp my paper. So before thinking too far ahead, <laughs> I put the foam tape on the back of this because I was like, oh no, it's warped and I need to straighten it out and foam tape will fix that, which it will. Um, I also could have just ran this through the plates of my die cutting machine with no die in there and it would have flattened it. And then I just wanted to see how my little scene was going to lay out. So I put the sun up here in the corner, still not thinking too far ahead because I did want to add a sentiment and in the end it doesn't end up where I wanted it to be, but it's fine. It ended up fine. So I put the little cup here. Now, can you imagine me sitting on a lawn chair, beach chair, uh, it's not a lawn chair if you're on the beach, right? <laughs> Sitting on the beach chair, looking out over the ocean with this fancy cup that looks like the beach and in the sunshine, just watching the waves roll on in. And then I wanted to use this beautiful pink in Maine Enchanted Garden paper pad. So I kind of pulled out one piece of paper first that I thought went really nicely with the shape of the sun and the color of the sun. And um, I really liked the way that that looked. See, here's my little stack of ties that I used for like the entire release. So then I pulled out the Simon Says Stamp Stitched Banners die and I thought, well, that would frame that up really nice. And I almost used this rectangle die, but I went for a more square shape and it has stitching and it's from Amuse Studio. Um, I think Amuse Studio, you can still buy their things online. They used to be kind of a home like demonstrator kind of brand. Anyway, <laughs> I was working with these shapes and I thought, well, that would work. So I pulled that um, Enchanted Garden paper pad back out and I wanted to find a pattern paper that I could cut that rectangle out of. And I was still working on it. I do really like this plaid. I think that's really pretty. Is that a plaid or is it like a gingham or is gingham a plaid? I think I've asked this before. I don't think anybody's answered me. Um, but I thought this one worked really nice. One nice thing about those paper pads is most of the papers do actually coordinate well. And even though there's a pattern on each of these, in the end it will look fine. <laughs> and then I needed one more for the background and I pulled out this more solid color print here. And it's almost a, it is a tone on tone. If you squint, it looks kind of like a single color. And uh, that means it reads like a salad to me. So that's how I'm using it. And I just trimmed off a piece of black to frame everything because I do like to frame most of my, when I layer stuff, usually I add black layers. 
this time I didn't. I just had that black panel in the back. I thought there was plenty of black um, shining through with the outlines on the cup and the sunshine and then the black border and in the end the black sentiment. So I thought the black was um, distributed enough. See, I almost put this like on the horizon line and then I wanted to put it on the beach, but I put that foam tape behind and I just wasn't sure I was going to get a clean image and I had already glued everything together. So I was like, well, let's figure out a different solution. So I just kept going and I adhered my pattern papers down and, um, and then this rectangle, if I had stood it up, it would have been too tall and it would have kind of covered the banner ends. So I just slid that die over and um, fit it right back into the stitching edges. And then I was able to kind of create a smaller rectangle so that it fit on my paper better. I don't know if you um, do that often, but sometimes I do it just to make sure that I get that stitching lined up. And then I must have had some adhesive on there. And then here is the cute little panel and that panel adorable just makes me want to go on the beach see still considering I'm like mm, I don't know it's not flat enough but lucky enough it does fit right there at the bottom next to the banner ends uh, so it doesn't have to overlap anything so I figured I better stamp it in there before I change my mind <laughs> and then I just used some versifying onyx black ink and um, that's kind of my go-to for sentiments, especially fine detail sentiments like this. This one says, get your shine on. I thought that would be perfect because here comes summer. And even a teacher would like this with a gift card inside to the local anywhere. You know, think about them teachers. <laughs> so that is the cover of my, or the cover. That is the panel, the front panel of my card. I finished it off with some Spectrum Noir clear glitter overlay pen on the sun and then also on like the drippy part of the cup. It kind of, oh, and the whole cup. It kind of looks like the beach and then the waves hitting the beach is kind of what I, what I thought when I seen it. And then I added glossy accents to the um, drippy part of the, the drippy part, the blue part of the cup, and then the entire sun. Now, when I first stamped these out, I did heat emboss them with clear embossing powder over my black VersaFine Onyx Black ink. So there are little ledges um, where this glossy accents is able to flow in, and then that it doesn't flow all over my card. But I really did put a pretty fine layer um, on there so that it wasn't all goopy. So um, then I needed to finish the inside. Oh, look at a gift from Riker. <laughs> I needed to finish the inside, and um, which is part of my New Year's resolution. And I think we're going strong. We're in, in almost to the middle of March, and I am still finish, finishing the insides of my cards. I have not skipped one. I think in one of my videos you've seen that I hadn't finished one or two, but I did go back and finish the insides later. So um, I have not failed yet. It's the best New Year's resolution ever. It's better than any other ones that I've ever had. <laughs> and then because I added that glossy accents before I put it on the card base, I added my adhesive to the card base and then carefully put this on here. And that is my card for today. I hope you really enjoyed this. I would like to know, do you use small little images and then make big scenes and just add them in? Do you need to make a scene with your stamped images or can you do something like this where you create, you know, a little painted scene? So anyway, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate you. Remember, stop at Jamie's shop N2S10. We'll get you 10% off. And as always, give cards generously. Bye.